Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Video Editor Studio and today I'm going to share with you how to recreate that floor crown title from our wedding watercolor floor pack. So let's check it out. Alright, so we are in DaVinci Resolve right now on the edit page and I'm going to share with you how to recreate that title from our watercolor floor pack. I'm going to show you how to do it right now in Fusion step by step, but you can download that macro by clicking the link in the description below. We've added a bunch of cool functionality here like background, perspective, glow, uh, shadow control, uh, etc. You can choose with or without animation and adjust the animation length directly from the edit page. But now let's jump right into Fusion and see how to make that. So we're just going to start by here going to effect and we're going to bring a new fusion composition in our timeline and then we can just go over to fusion. To make a title like this you will need to select some PNG file uh, that can be uh, flowers or that can be leaves. In my case I have choose one leaf and one flower and I'm going to use those two. So I'm going to drag them here in my working area and then I'm gonna drag a background in my working area. I'm gonna then link the output of my leaf to the background to link them together. And for now, I'm just gonna put my floor aside for later. Quickly, I'm just gonna rename them so I know what it is. So here, flower, and then here, same for the leaf. Then I'm just gonna bring my merge to my viewer to see what I'm doing. And here the background, I'm just gonna reduce the alpha channel down to zero so we have transparency. Now, we want to do a crown, so that's gonna be circular. To help us, we're gonna create a guideline using a circular mask. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring a new background here in my working area, and I'm gonna link that background two to the background one. And then I'm gonna select that background two, and I'm gonna click on the ellipse mask to just get a round ellipse. Here, I'm just gonna untick solid, and here I'm just gonna increase border width. Then I'm gonna right click on width, expression, and I'm gonna link the width and the height with the expression, so I can retain the same value between the width and the height and get a perfect circle. I'm gonna reduce then the size to 0.4, and that's gonna be the guideline to create our crown. Now I'm gonna click on my leaf, I'm gonna hit shift space on my keyboard and search for transform, and I'm gonna bring a transform node. I'm gonna reduce the size of my leaf to 0.5, bring it up here on my guideline. We're gonna switch the angle for uh, minus 60. So here, as you can see, it's following the guideline. I'm just gonna adjust it a tiny bit. So the core of the leaf is centered on the outline. And now we're directly gonna do the animation because with this specific title, we're gonna do a lot of copy and paste of nodes and that will be a waste of time to redo the animation for each one of the leaves. So we're gonna make sure to just do all the animation necessary on the leaf before duplicating it to create the crown. That's gonna save us just a bunch of time. It might be a tiny bit overwhelming. You're gonna see we're gonna have uh, quite a lot of nodes, but it's essentially just the same node copy and pasted. So it's not really that complicated. It's just that you're gonna be able to see a lot of different nodes, uh, but don't stress that, it's gonna be very simple. So for the animation here, I'm gonna have the transform. I'm gonna go over to the size, right click on it, and we're gonna go with modify with anim curve. Now I just prompt open the modifier and we're gonna be able to do the modification here on the anim curve. So I'm gonna switch from transition to custom. And here we're gonna switch from linear to easing. And for easing, we're gonna select elastic right there. Now I want my animation to be two seconds. So we're gonna go at frame zero and here I'll drop a keyframe on input at zero. And then we're gonna go up to frame 48 and we're gonna put the input at one. Now, as you can see, our scale is way too high. We just want to put the same size that we had at the beginning. So right now, as you can see, it's jacked up, but we want to go back to what we had, which was 0.5. And as you can see now, it's just back to the original size that we had. All right, let's play it. Perfect, so we have a small elastic animation and now we're just gonna duplicate that leaf to go all around the circle. I want that leaf to be duplicated eight times. So we're gonna need eight merge. So I'm gonna just copy my merge right here and then I'm gonna paste it and we're just gonna repeat that seven times. So here we have already two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, perfect. The way we're gonna duplicate it is gonna be with a transform and rotation. So here, I'm just gonna start by copying this transform, which is the animation that I need for the leaf. And we're just gonna paste it right here. I'm then gonna connect the leaf to the transform. And then I'm gonna connect the transform to the merge. 
Now we're just gonna select the transform, it shifts space and search again for transform, bring that in. Now, right now the viewer is showing the merge before. So we're just gonna go at the end of all merge here and just bring that on all viewer. And as you can see, if we go to the transform tool and we adjust the angle, we have now a leaf that just is perfectly aligned with all guideline and we can just duplicate that eight times. So to have it spaced equally, we're just gonna divide 360, which is the radius of a circle by eight, and that will give us the value that we need to input for each of the duplicate. That value end up being 45 per duplicate. So here for the first one, we're gonna do minus 45, then that's just gonna be minus 90, so on and so forth. So here, let's just do minus 45. Now we can just copy those two transform, and then we're just gonna paste them here, link the output of the transform to the merge, and link the leaf to the transform right there. I'm gonna do this for each of the merge. And now we're just gonna go back to each of all transform where we're adjusting the angle and we're gonna just input the value. So here it's zero, then here it's 45, then here it's minus 90, so on and so forth. All right, perfect. So now if we play it, as you can see, we have the animation and we're getting somewhere. But the problem is that right now uh, it's a bit boring because everything is just popping up at the same time. I would like to offset the animation for each of those leaves so they just pop up one by one. To do that, we're gonna go to here, the second transform, and I'm gonna go back to the modifier. And here with time offset, we're gonna change the value for each of the leaves. So the second one right here, time offset, we're gonna go with 0 0.02 and then the third one 0 0.04 and we're going to continue like that with uh, 0.2 of interval for each of them so here the fourth one 0.06 then 0.08 then 0 0.1 0 0.12 and 0 0.14 now if we play it as you can see we have that time offset that just make uh, the whole thing a bit more interesting in my opinion. All right, so now we just finished the process for the leaf. We're gonna do the exact same thing for the floor. So I'm just gonna make some space here with my media out. I'm gonna move the floor up right here. And basically we can reuse or merge here and we can reuse the transform. We're just gonna have to create new animation for uh, the floor. So I'm just gonna select all my transform and my merge right there. So I'm just gonna copy everything, copy, then go a bit forward and then paste everything. Just gonna bring everything right there. Link the output of my last merge to the new merge right here and then link the flower to that merge. Make sure that the flower is linked to the green arrow and the merge is linked to the yellow arrow. Then making some space and linking my media out. And then I can just bring the viewer here to the media out. All right, so now the process is gonna be pretty much the same for the floor. I'm gonna select my floor and hit shift space on the keyboard, search for transform, bring a new transform node here in the working area. And then we're just gonna reposition that floor on the guideline. First off, I'm gonna change the size because right now it's a bit too big. So I'm gonna go with 0 0.8 and then I'm just gonna move it on my guideline right here. I'm gonna make it so the hurt of the floor is uh, straight on the guideline. And then what we're gonna do is here, we're gonna adjust the pivot and we're gonna bring the pivot at the center of the floor because otherwise the animation will come from the pivot here. So that will just come from the center up there rather than from the center of the floor. I hope that makes sense, but basically just change the pivot, put it here on the center of the floor. So the pivot is that cross right here. And then we can just readjust the position to uh, make sure it's centered properly. So here we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to select size, modify width, anim curve, and then that just opened modifier right here. We're going to switch from transition to custom and here from linear to easing and none, we're going to select elastic. Now let's start the animation when the circle is done. So that's going to be about here, 18. I want the floor to start popping up when all the leaves have popped up pretty much, just a tiny bit before maybe. So here that's gonna be frame 18. I'm just gonna drop keyframe on input at zero, and then we're just gonna move forward. And I want the animation to be a bit less than two seconds. So we're gonna go about frame 60, and then we're gonna drop a keyframe on input here at one. Then here we're gonna change the scale from five to zero point eight so the same size as uh, we set up at the beginning it might be another one but just remember the size that you've inputted here uh, at the beginning and just put it here on the scale as well 
All right, now let's just play it to make sure everything is fine. Perfect, I think it's good. Now we're just gonna have to duplicate that floor the same way we've duplicated the leaves. So here I'm just gonna copy the transform. I'm gonna paste it, link the floor to the transform and then link the transform to the other transform. And we're gonna repeat that process for all the floors once more. All right, perfect, let's play it. Good, everything seems to work fine. Now we're just gonna have to do the same thing as we've done with the leaf and set an offset for all the floors. So I'm gonna go to the second transform, going to modifier, and here we're just gonna repeat the same process with the time offset. We're gonna do 0.2 for the first one, and then 0.4 for the third one, 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.1, 0 0.12, and 0.14. All right, now let's play that again. Perfect, we got our animation. Now the heavy lifting is done. Uh, most of the hard work uh, has been done. Now it's just a couple of tweaks uh, to just make it a bit nicer. So the first tweak that we're gonna make is here, we're gonna do uh, an animation on the rotation of the crown to give it a bit more movement and make it a bit more dynamic. So I'm gonna select here the merge and I'm gonna hit shift space on my keyboard and select another transform. And then here, we're gonna just put an animation on the angle. So I'm gonna right click on angle, modify with, and in curve, going to the modifier. Here, we're gonna switch from transition to custom. Linear, we're gonna go with easing. And here, none, we're gonna select cubic. Then on input here, we're gonna drop a keyframe at frame zero on zero. And then we're just gonna continue and move forward until the animation is done. Uh, we can choose a bit before actually. So maybe, I don't know, frame uh, 50 seems right. And then input, we're just gonna put it at one. So now if we play it, as you can see, it's way too much because it's uh, a full rotation. We don't want that much. We're just gonna go with scale at minus 90. Now let's play it and it's much better, much softer, in my opinion. Now, we don't need our outline anymore, so I'm just gonna go there and delete our guideline, and instead, we're gonna replace that with a drop shadow. So here, I'm just gonna select my transform, hit shift space on the keyboard, and search for drop shadow, and just enter that. That's just gonna give more depth to the design. Now, the hardest part, which is the crown, is done. You can then add uh, any sort of text that you like. I'm not gonna go into much detail for that because there is plenty of tutorial on the channel about how to make animation for the text. So you can pick and choose depending on the style that you want for this. Uh, right now, I'm just gonna bring a simple one. I'm just gonna bring one text, link that to the drop shadow here with a merge. Here, we're gonna write uh, whatever, Jane, and Tony, I'm gonna switch the font for something nicer, like uh, Pompier, for example. That's a Google font that you can easily find on uh, googlephone.com. Adjust the position if needed, size tracking, etc. On all sample, you have a top text and a bottom text, so you can do that as well. Uh, I've explained how to do circular text on another video that I will link in the description below. Right now, I'm just gonna select my text, hit shift space on my keyboard and bring another drop shadow to again help giving more depth to the title. I'm gonna go back to text one and we're gonna do a simple follower animation. So I'm just gonna right click here on the text box and we're gonna select a follower. It bring again the modifier tab right here here in order we're gonna just do completely random or random but one by one and we're gonna do uh, between the first and last character and delay we're gonna go with 25 now let's go to the shading and do an animation on the opacity so i want the animation to be done at maybe 50 yeah 55 so between the end of the rotation just drop a keyframe on opacity at one and then we're gonna go at frame 20 and we're just gonna bring the opacity down to zero all right now let's play it perfect i think i'm pretty happy with that and that's pretty much it that's how you will do a cron floor title in davinci resolve i hope this video was helpful again you can download this macro by clicking the link in the description below we've added a bunch of functionality to it to make it very easy to use directly from the edit page and if you want to get more of those titles you can get the full pack available on our website which contains 30 watercolor uh, floor titles so it's a bunch of crown and a uh, similar title to this one thank you very much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and See you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates, but only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack containing a compilation of 20 titles curated from our library. 
link in the description below or at videodigastudio.com.